welcome to this week's episode of Paint Talk. Today I'm going to be answering your questions. So if you have questions, please comment in the comment section with those questions and I will answer them on the next Paint Talk. All right, so I'm just going to jump on into it. And the first one is from Pat Wessels, and I'm probably saying that name wrong, but she's pretty much asking, uh, can you use uh, linseed oil with uh, water mixable oil paints? Uh, that's a good question because I actually didn't know if you could use uh, different mediums when I first uh, picked them up I was just using just water uh, but you can use linseed oil uh, the only weird thing is dealing with cleaning your brush I when I use the linseed oil I just wipe my brush clean when I switch colors opposed to using the water because I kind of figured like the water and the oil would just not go well together I also made a video on linseed oil if you have no idea what I'm talking about linseed oil I've got a video link to that right there but from what I've heard that you can you know you can use everything that you use uh, in regular oils, medium wise and solution wise to uh, water mixable oils. So I've heard, I haven't fully tested it out. If you wanna know more about water mixable oils, I actually made a video on that right here. All right, let's uh, move on to question number two, uh, which is from Brian. Uh, it says, hey, there's toning and priming considered the same thing. I always see artists begin a new painting by toning the canvas with burnt umber, but I also see artists making their first step uh, by just priming it with gesso. Is gesso required first before toning it, or is toning just basically another way to gesso it? All right, so those are uh, toning and priming, uh, two separate things. Uh, uh, priming with gesso, uh, when you see artists doing that, it's because there is no gesso on their canvas. They have, um, a lot of times you're gonna see this when people stretch their own canvas, they buy a huge roll of just raw canvas. Uh, they get the stretcher bars, they stretch their canvas, and then they prime it with the gesso. And what the gesso does is pretty much allow you to paint on it because canvas by itself is very, very, very absorbent. So you're gonna put down paint, it's just gonna absorb, it's gonna be dry, it's not gonna be you know fun to paint on. Uh, and the gesso pretty much allows you to paint on it. Um, if you want to know how to gesso, I actually made a video on gessoing um, a canvas to reuse it, uh, and I can. Uh, there's a video for that. I'll put that right there. Chances are, if you're buying your canvas, like already pre-stretched and everything, it's going to be primed already. My opinions on uh, gessoing your own canvas for beginners, I don't recommend it. I mean, if you have the chance to and you want to, go for it. It's a great thing to learn how to do. I mean, I did it pretty early on just as, like, for the experience, so I know how to do it. But honestly, just buying your stuff pre-primed uh it's gonna save you time I, I know you prime it yourself you'll probably save money in the long run if you do it in bulk but weighing the cost benefit you know and if you don't have space to, to you know lay out the canvas cut it stretch it prime it you know it takes time and you know it's another thing that if you don't want to worry about it don't worry about it and just buy it pre-primed Okay, now toning. Uh, when you see people tone their canvas with like burnt umber, burnt sienna, or just like some neutral gray color, uh, that's different. That They're just using um, oil paint and uh, paint thinner, mineral, mineral spirits, whatever, and they are uh, putting a thin uh, wash of it all over their canvas because they want to get rid of the pure white canvas because uh, that's not a fun uh, way to start a painting. And you don't want to start a painting on a start, uh, plain white canvas because it's really hard to judge uh, your values uh, because you're starting on the brightest uh, end of the value scale so any color that you put on there is going to seem really uh, dark because it's next to white also if you want to put white down it's not going to show up so you know but if you have that burnt umber you put white down it's going to show up and it's just going to you know help you build the painting better you know, there's uh, a few ways of doing it i've seen people that just take like a tube of uh, whatever color they're going to be uh, toning their canvas with and you know put a couple dabs of it on their canvas, canvas, pour some of their uh, paint thinner on top of it and just wipe it with a paper towel. Uh, key is to not get this too uh, thick, like you don't want it too thick and too dark. You, you want to keep, uh, you know, the paint like, you know, pretty um, like a wash, uh, almost looking uh, like watercolor. And now some artists let it dry completely before painting over it. Um, other artists will paint on it right away. Uh, just depends on, you know, what you like and what you're trying to do. You also can get a kind of cool effect uh, with toning when you mix up your wash and you uh, use your brush to put it on the canvas. You can get, you if you keep the brush strokes, if you don't wipe it with a paper towel and smooth it all out, you can keep the brush strokes and it adds a good like, uh, uh, you know, energy if you're gonna keep that uh, in your painting. Like I see a lot of people do that with portraits. They'll, they'll 
do the brush strokes and then they'll leave it and they'll paint over like a portrait over top of it so you have like a kind of a cool like a lot of movement going on and it just i don't know it's a really cool effect that some people like all right uh now question number three but before that i need to get some coffee because i am all out Alrighty, on to more questions. How you doing, Kinsey? Say hi to the camera. Hello. Hi. Wiggy, 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 wiggy. Okay, let's find another question. All right, I'll let you go. Michael Kitchen says, could you please uh, do a video on mixing grays? Uh, it is the hardest thing for me to master. I see a gray like in the sky and I can never mix it properly, especially those really light almost neutral grays. My grays always look purple or brown no matter what I use. I'd use ultramarine, cad yellow, yellow ochre. Maybe it's my palette. Uh, thanks. Um, well, I will do a uh, like a full video on grays in the future so I can give you kind of a demonstration. But uh, when I read this question, the first thing I thought about was how I don't even think in terms of gray. Like I don't think of gray as even a color. And that might be your problem. Like when I look at a sky, like say if I see a cloud and most people would say, oh, that's a gray cloud. Like I don't see a gray cloud. I see a very desaturated blue cloud, very desaturated purple cloud. Cause that's what gray is. It's just like a very desaturated color. And the way you desaturate color is, you know, with its complement. So if you are like, look at the clouds and it's like, oh, they're kind of on a purple, they're, you know, if they're gray clouds, like, all right, is it, if you had to choose like what color is it closest to like you had to choose like purple blue but like you have to choose it's like oh it's i guess it's a purple but it's a really desaturated purple that it looks gray then mix up your purple and just keep mixing you know some yellow into it and with clouds you're going to use white you know you're always going to have to use white in the clouds and a big thing that people do is they make their clouds too dark and you got to remember that your clouds are in the sky and like in a landscape your lightest plane you can break down a landscape into planes and the sky is going to be your lightest your second lightest is going to be your ground plane so any flat ground that's going to be the light, next lightest value after that any slanted planes like hills mountains those are going to be the next and then the darkest are going to be any upright objects so people uh trees buildings like that you can test that you know you can look at pictures unless they have some filter and you know whatever on it just take like a raw picture put it in black and white and you'll see like your darkest objects will be your trees your sky will be really light your cloud will be pretty light but not as light as your sky uh so if you're having trouble with clouds and mixing the right gray like look into that but the key is just to really don't think of gray as a color like get that completely out of your head like gray doesn't exist now michael says that he is using like cad yellow uh lizzie and crimson uh phthalo blue cobalt, which is good that's good and he's like in the burnts like the burnt umber and stuff like that that's good. Um, it might just be also be like just, you know, more practice dialing in your colors. I mean, grays are tough. Like one of the hardest things to do is to paint like a gray day, like overcast landscape. That's tough because everything is like muted and there's no real crisp highlights. So you gotta really know what you're doing value wise to make everything read correctly. He says his grays always look uh, purple or brown. So if it's purple, add some yellow like add some um lemon yellow maybe yellow ochre uh and you know keep mixing in white to dial it into however dark or light you want your cloud to be but if the problem's purple go yellow if you're looking to like make it more gray uh for your color if you're getting brown uh that's gonna be too warm uh brown uh it's gonna be a warmer color so i'd probably add a little added some some blue in there and uh you know again more more white a lot of people forget to add the white and the white really does change it uh and really lighten it up from uh jamie elder it says uh my colors clash and contrast too much i think i read somewhere about mixing one color into all the colors on my palette for plain air if so how do i choose the common color is this even a thing it makes sense because i think all colors are under the same light but does all the colors share a yellow if outside um i've never heard of that of like mixing one color in all your colors uh, with plain air painting um uh, without seeing your work uh or like what you're doing my guess is that you might have too many colors on your palette to start with uh so maybe knock it down just to the primaries of white 
Uh, so cadmium red, ultramarine blue, uh, lemon yellow, and titanium white. That way uh, you're having to uh, mix to get all your colors and that will probably lead to your colors having more harmony. Uh, also it might be a problem of not mixing in enough of each color's complement um, because you know if you think about it like a green tree like green is gonna have blue and yellow right so if you don't put any red in there which is uh, greens complement anything else in your painting that has red in it isn't gonna really like match with the tree because the tree has no red in it at all um, if you're mixing green for a tree like you have to put red in it or else it's just gonna look like not natural it's gonna to be too green and this goes for any this goes for any color you know not just green you have blue you might not have enough orange in it um, so know like know your compliments and look for the complement color and what you're painting because that will help tie all the other colors uh, in, in the painting into that object because there's a little bit of it in everything so maybe that maybe look for um, the complement colors in your uh, pain. So if you have questions that you want answered, I can answer those on the Paint Talks. Leave your question in the comment section of uh, this video or any of the videos. If you're interested in like seeing some uh, like full real-time painting tutorials, like in real time me painting a painting, uh, like I got a Patreon page. Uh, I got a link in the description. Five bucks a month, uh, you get multiple videos, uh, like full real time, hour plus long videos of me painting. Also, like if you want personal one on one coaching, uh, you can do that as well. That's an option. If you want to know what kind of materials to buy, I put links in the description of all my videos to the, the materials I use. You can get them on Amazon. If you want to see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I am Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.